Good evening and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about resultant gravitational forces. Now I have my penguin and he is in space and he is between the earth and the sun. And this penguin is 1.5 times 10 to the 7 meters from earth and the total distance between <coughs> the earth and the sun is one astronomical unit or 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. Now I want to know the resultant force my penguin feels at this position. So my penguin is in two gravitational fields at once. My penguin is in the Earth's and the Sun's. And if I can work out the forces that each one of them gives, I am able to work out the resultant force. Now to give you an idea, it's exactly the same as what you've been doing probably in first year or maybe in even, even in GCSE. If I'm being pulled by 10 newtons this way and 5 newtons this way, Overall, I'm being pulled five newtons in this direction. And the exact same thing goes for looking at gravitation, but it's just another step involved, calculating the force due to gravitation. So I've got this force here due to the sun, and I've got this dual force here due to the earth. I'm gonna calculate them now. So the force due to the earth is big G, M of the earth, mass of the penguin, over R squared. So that's 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times by the mass of the Earth, and that is on your data sheet, of 5.98 times 10 to the 24 times the mass of the penguin, which is 1,000, all over the radius squared of the distance here. So that's 1.5 times 10 to the 7 squared. And that equals, if I just put that into my calculator here, Eight times ten to the twenty-four. That's by a thousand. I get an answer of one seven seven two newtons. Okay. Now I'm going to say the same process for the sun. So big G M of the sun, mass of my penguin, over R squared. Now, this is going to be 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times by the mass of the sun, which is also on your data sheet, of 1.99 times 10 to the 30 times by the mass of the penguin and divided by my radius. Now, my radius here, okay, is the distance between the penguin and the sun. And I've been given this information here and this value here. And all I have to do is take away this, the, uh, take away this from this. And this leaves me my distance here, my radius. And it's going to be 1.49985 times 10 to the 11 meters there. Okay. So this here is going to be 1.49985 times 10 to the 11 squared. Okay. So 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. That's 1.99 times 10 to the 30 times by 1,000 divided by 1.4995. That equals 5.9 newtons. So he's not really being pushed, pulled by the sun at all. So this here is 1772 newtons. And this here is 5.9 newtons. Literally, all you do is exactly the same as you would do in linear forces, is that you just take them away from each other. So 1772 minus that, and I have a resultant force 1766.1 newtons towards so this here means that this penguin has got a greater force towards Earth. So that is the direction he will fall. And if this penguin had a tangential velocity, this penguin would move in a circle around the Earth. I'm going to take this a little bit further, and this is something you may see more in electrostatic fields, but I'm going to do it. And I've just changed the direction here. I've now got the same distances, so 1.5 times 10 to the 7 and 1.49985 times 10 to the 11. But this time they're at right angles to each other. So 
I would work out the forces just as I would before. So what I would do is I would work out here, I would work out the force due to the Earth using Newton's law of gravitation, and that's going to be the same value this time because it's the same uh, same numbers here. So it's going to be one seven seven two newtons, and the force to the sun, which is going to equal five point nine newtons. Now, how you do this if the forces are perpendicular to, to each other, like this here, is you just do a vector analysis. I am moving this way with 1772 newtons, and I'm moving up by 5.9. This here would be my resultant direction. I'm going to calculate that using Pythagoras. So 17772 squared, so 1772 squared plus 5.9 squared square rooted, So 1772.01 newtons. The reason I've gone to so many decimal places, I've gone to far more significant figures than I should, is because it's slightly, you can imagine this is such a small force. I'm predominantly going in this direction. If I find this angle here, okay, you find that this angle here it's like 0 0.19 degrees. It's so tiny. There's such a negligible force towards the Earth, but you're slightly deflected there. Okay. So resultantly, I'm going 1772.0.1 in a very subtle angle here. Okay. So this here is how you find the resultant force. Now, from this, in another video, you can work out about finding the resultant gravitational force. Force. I prove this by finding the resultant force and then um, dividing that by the mass of the penguin. Am I able to find the uh, gravitational field strength at that point? So that is resultant gravitational force.